Hello everybody, John Call here with uh, three brief things I want to bring to your attention. First, uh, committee deadlines. House and Senate leadership have agreed on deadlines. The first deadline is March 20th for a bill in the House of Origin. The second deadline is March 27th. And the third deadline is April 24th. And that would be for finance related bills. So deadlines have been established. Uh, they're, they're not as tight as last year, but they're still, it's going to be something of a foot race. Secondly, uh, I'd say the session is off to a somewhat partisan beginning. Uh, if the Ways and Means Committee uh, last night was any indication. The House Republicans want to pass a deficiency bill that is limited to one subject, the floods, and the uh, Democrats and the governor want a deficiency bill that has a much broader scope. So last night the committee brought in, at the de Democrats' behest, the commissioners from the various state agencies and put them through some kind of inquisition about their needs. In the end, uh, the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee is going to prevail on this. One other thing I wanted to bring to your attention is the extent to which the remodeling has really limited the amount of working space in the Capitol. If we start in the basement, you can just see these narrow little lines where this, these are the, the the tunnels or the pathways in the, ba in, the, in, the, in the basement that you can get to elevators by. On the ground floor, it's room 15 and some auxiliary office areas for senators in the, behind it. On the first floor, it's the, uh, the staircase leading up to the Capitol, a small area in the west wing, and then these office spaces in the north wing. On the second floor, the north wing and the west wing are open. And on the third floor, the north wing and the west wing are open. So it's very limited space in the state capitol. And I just thought that would be of interest to you. People are talking about the remodeling. And this is the impact of it. Uh, with that, I'll yield to Peg. Good afternoon. It's Peg Larson here at the MnDOT Cafe at the state capitol. As you can see from the people behind me, people were starting to come to hearings. Some hearings, however, are still just doing presentations and having people say where they're from and what their goals are for this session, especially in the House uh, Policy Committee. Um, in the House Finance Committee, they did do a, um, a segment on the world's best workforce. And the Minnesota Department of Education talked about the fact that school boards will establish an advisory committee that ensures community engagement in the development and review of the plan, reflects the diversity of the district in its school sites, and it says districts may establish site teams, and also makes recommendations to the school board regarding rigorous academic standards and student achievement goals. The, uh, the world's best workforce was a task force put on by the governor and has been working on things over the interim and uh, came out with their final report. Now it will be put into bill form and it will be heard, I believe, in uh, Uyghur's committee because there probably are dollars attached to it. Um, in uh, Uyghur's committee also, they did a hearing on technology, and that was the Governor's Broadband Task Force, and his chair talked about um, the fact that all students in this state should be able to link into uh, the Internet and do digital learning. The question on this one is how much is the state willing to pay for broadband? There are very many different requests this year and is that one of the top priorities? I know it is for the governor, but it is very costly. A very interesting hearing once again in Senator Uyghur's, or Chair Uyghur's committee was on Senator Hoffman's uh, Senate File 6, optional pre-K kindergarten program for universal all-day four-year-old um, education. 
Now, this one came under fire by the daycare organizations who would lose these kids um, in their daycares, and they say that would certainly deter a lot of people from opening daycares or it may make some of them close. Um, and they talked also about the scholarships that kids go now to go to these programs. Those children would still have the choice to go to a private program or they could go into the public school program that would be uh, in the school and they would then lose obviously their scholarship dollars. There was some confusion about that in the committee because I don't think that had been thought about in the bill. And the other thing is um, Senator Chamberlain got very upset in the committee and called it madness <laughs> and made it a little bit more lively in there as to whether this bill was going to go forward because it has a very high fiscal note. And I think uh, it had a lot of support on both sides from Democrats and Republicans in terms of uh, pre-K and educating four-year-olds and having them ready to go into the schools and knowing the school, knowing where they sit, you know, knowing how to print and a few other things. And there was opposition from the business partnership as well as members of the uh, daycare associations. One thing I'd like to say this year is that there are many associations uh, showing up to testify on different bills that have not been here at the Capitol before and they're representing low-income kids, they're representing all different kind of things and they've built their own organizations and quite truthfully it's the first time they've been here to testify. There's a group of Somali young men who have been here to testify. They would like five million dollars and they want money for after-school programs and this is their quote to keep their young men and women from going to ISIS which of course is a very good thing to do but they would like to use that money for 4-H and Boy Scouts and so I think somebody needs to talk to them and let them know that 4-H is a county funded program and Boy Scouts is private and I'm, I'm sure somebody will along the way. They were here last year too and did receive some funds for their after school programs and I know they're working very hard to make sure that their kids stay here in the United States and abide by the rules. Um, Next fall, scholarships and IEP kids won't be able to get the dollars uh, <clears throat> excuse me, from the, um, the universal uh, pre-K scholarships if this takes off and everybody goes to the schools. Um, uh, Senator Torres Ray had a few things that she wanted to address. She had a big issue about the daycare workers. And this bill will go to Senator Thomasoni's committee, but it will come back to Senator Weger's committee to be voted on. It was laid on the table. It was not uh, laid on the table for possible inclusion, but it was laid on the table. Uh, after that, Senator Bonoff came in and presented a bill. Um, <clears throat> the Jewish Association uh, helps help people go in, teachers go into schools in the metro and especially in the rural area. They bring books, they bring toys, and they work with families that are truly underprivileged and they get funding from the state from this and she was asking to continue that funding and they have been an extremely successful program. Uh, in the House uh, Education Finance Committee they did a presentation on the school trust lands and this basically just said what lands were school trust lands, how the schools get the money, what money they do get. Um, Representative Anzell talked about the fact that this money is being harvested by wealthy Americans and they don't pay taxes on it, which I don't know if that's true or not, but that there's enough money up there to fund all the schools forever if indeed they use that wisely, but I don't think the Rangers would be very proud or happy to do that. So, And then um, the one that they did today, which was really interesting, was Senator Hoffman did Senate File 75 and Senate File 76. Long-term, uh, school long-term facilities maintenance revenue, and he did it, one bill without charter schools in it and another bill with charter schools in it. There was tremendous support for this bill, and he even said he's never had a bill where somebody wasn't mad at him and everybody loved the bill. <laughs> everybody does love this bill. 
It actually helps all school districts with their maintenance, which of all the people, I think about 20 people testified and said that school maintenance is one of the hardest things to keep up with. And you can't keep asking people for money over and over again. Uh, I believe Rochester will get about, let me see here on the chart, if this goes through in 2017, they'll get $16 more a pupil, and they will get their current is would be $584 by then, and they would add $16 to that. So it's a bump and it's an increase, but it's at least going in the right direction. As we go around with the Rochester bills, we're finding that some legislators have signed a not one penny more pledge, which makes it a little bit difficult to get people to sign on to fiscal bills, but certainly not impossible. I think, you know, Senator Dahl said that this was the one bill that he has never had any opposition to, and that is because all school districts are putting aside uh, 10 to 20 percent for facilities. Uh, it repair and it's just really eaten away at everybody's budget with all these other cuts. So we had about 20, oh, 20 or so uh, superintendents and business managers and other people come and testify about what a great need that this bill is for and that the money would be extremely well spent. So it was accepted on both sides of the aisle, so I think it has a good chance of passing. It also was laid on the table because they did not finish with a discussion, so it will come back.